This is the five tech things that you should know about episode number 53 for August 27th, 2010. And it's brought to you this week by Mosey.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the five tech things you should know about. My name is Jeffrey Powers. TV Azine with Association of Geek Azine and found over on VOD Pod, found over on techpodcast.tv. It's tech and it's video, it's that it's here. Child safe and friendly shows, and that's the best part. We're over on Blipta.tv. TV. We've got a lot of great shows, a lot of great stuff coming out there, including the five tech things that you should know about. All right, folks, yes, I am going out to Blog World. I've told you that a few times. I'm going to continue to tell you that. October 14th through the 16th over in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you are a blogger, a podcaster, a videocaster, you need to go. We just got done finalizing the base of the sessions for the digital broadcast track. That, that includes video podcasting. That includes audio podcasting. It includes streaming. It includes all the stuff you need to know to make the best content. I'm not a professional. I'm working on it. Just got the mics all placed out here down in the Geek Bar. Speaking of which, you kind of like the new semi look? We're going to totally unveil the new look just a little bit later, down a couple weeks from now. Just got the whole back walls painted, a couple coats, still a couple coats left to do so it looks actually even. Uh, we're working on it, working on it. So if there's anything you'd like to see down in the Geek Bar, if you've got a sign that you want to donate for the Geek Bar, all you have to do is email me over at geekazine at gmail.com. All right, folks, it's your life online. You should back it up now. You should back it up often, and you should back it up off-site. Just read on Tuesday about a guy from Michigan who actually used his Mosey Home Unlimited to capture a bad guy who stole his laptop because the guy went and backed up the files, turned on the laptop, and started backing up files with Mosey. They could pinpoint where the laptop was, and they were able to get that laptop back from him. So... Security prevention is a new part of this whole thing. Geek is the code you got to remember. Geek, because you're going to get it $4.95 a month. It's the price of a hard drive a year, and you're stacking up your data off-site into secure area. And that's the best part. Use that code geek. That gives you an additional 10% off that already low price. So back up now, back up often, and back up off-site with mosey.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the death of the phone as we know it, and I feel fine. Google announced Gmail, and Gmail, a special option where if you're talking to somebody through email and you say, hey, I need to call that person, you can use their online dialer where you can call, a call to them and talk with them. What's that going to mean? Is that going to mean I'm going to get rid of my Skype? Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Of course, Google purchased a company called Global IP Solutions a few months back, and everybody was going, ah, we're going to see a Skype killer out there, and this is the start of it. Now, if you're in the United States and Canada, you are lucky because you can get free phone calls to people using this service right here for now. I, I bet you at the end of the year they'll start to get pricing plans going, so you might see a little bit different idea in that whole thing. But... For now, you'll be able to call anybody. So how does it work? Basically, you call up your Gmail, you got the contact. If the contact has a phone number in it, you can call them right from there. Hook up your, uh, hook up your headphone sets to the, to the computer, you can talk back and forth. Voice over IP is getting really, really interesting. We'll follow this and we'll let you know what happens. If you don't have a Gmail account, you might want to think about getting one, or maybe not if you don't want to get into that whole thing. But does this mean the end of the conventional phone, even the mobile phone, even the iPhone? All right, let's talk about this. It's the brand new app from Netflix for the iPhone. Yes, I did download it and I did try it. I watched a little bit of a watched a little bit of Family Guy. You can watch a lot through your Wi-Fi and through the 3G system. We've got Dexter Season 1 loading up right here. But let me tell you something, it looks pretty good. I've tried it. You can probably hear a little bit of the Showtime sound there. Let's turn this down just a bit. But it is amazing what you can do. 
Now it's a streaming service, it's not a caching service, which I would kind of like. If I'm on the plane, I could actually take two or three shows and put it onto my iPhone and I could actually watch it through, uh, through the iPhone while I'm on the plane. That would be a kind of nice addition for Netflix. But in the meantime, if I'm on the road or something like that, I can watch everything through my iPhone. Now, if you don't have an unlimited plan, you might want to watch how much you watch, how much you see, because this can get very pricey after a while. I really like the idea of Netflix, though, and, and I really like the idea of Netflix on my iPhone, as well as an iPad, as well as a computer. So now I can watch Netflix in a whole new way. When I'm waiting at the dentist's office, when I'm waiting on the bus, when I'm out and about doing something else, I can have it here. And I can also set up my tethering and actually run it through there. So lots of great ways to watch Netflix. Why would you want anything else? I don't know. I don't know. Whoa, oh, hey, everything's in 3D. Kind of. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw this in CES. There was, there was a company out there that was making a 3D glasses-less TV set. It was okay. It was a little bit... Yeah, it, it, you could see a little bit of the 3D, but it wasn't great. It wasn't like putting on the glasses and seeing that. The biggest problem with all these companies like Sony and Sharp and Panasonic that have been putting out 3D TV sets is you've got to wear a pair of glasses. And they're never the same pair of glasses. If you had a Panasonic TV, you wear this pair of glasses. If you have a Sony TV, they got this pair of glasses. Monsters come out with a universal pair of glasses. I don't know how that's going to work just yet, but it's going to be a pretty pricey thing if it's from Monster. However, now Toshiba has come out with this new TV that will let you see 3D without a pair of glasses. And that's going to be a great thing for a lot of consumers. They probably don't want that whole full-in-the-face 3D. They just want enough 3D to kind of get the experience going. And then they're going to go back to working on their spreadsheets and stuff like that. You don't need to see the nightly news in 3D. You don't need to see other shows in 3D. You might want to watch your football and your baseball in 3D. You might want to watch something else in 3D. But for the most part, you don't want to put on glasses every time you want to see a show. So that's where this comes in. You'll be able to look up and go, hey, there's 3D. That's pretty cool. Back to work. We'll see what happens. It's not the best technology in the world. Maybe it'll get better within a few years. But if you want this TV, it's going to kind of cost you. So you might want to wait a couple of years for the technology to kind of evolve from here. Yes, it is back to school. We've been highlighting for the last few weeks some cool tech, some cool ideas to get you back to school and get you working in the right way. This is mostly for college students, and this is a great little product right here. It's down in the corner here. It's called the Pogo Plug. And yeah, it's a bright pink. But what it does do is it lets you access your files. You can put all your files onto USB drives. You can plug it into the Pogo plug. And then when you're out and about through your iPhone, through your, your laptop, you can connect up to that Pogo plug and pull those files. That way you don't need to have your laptop there all the time. You can have it on your iPhone. You can say, hey, I need to find out about this spreadsheet. So you call it up on the iPhone. Hey, this is pretty nice. So the Pogo Plug is a great addition. Now another addition to go with it. Now the Pogo Plug, just so you know, is $99. A nice addition to go with it is this nice little Sprint Overdrive card. It's a 3G slash 4G card. If you have 3G, and especially if you have 4G in this area, this is a great addition so you can get it on your laptop, so you can get it on your phone while you're in class, waiting for the professor to actually say something in class. Pretty cool stuff. I wish I would have had this when I went to, to college. I would have been playing games all day. No, probably not. But anyway, the Sprint uh, Overdrive card, uh, that's all dependent on price plans and how much you can get it for with a, two, with a uh, plan from Sprint. You can buy it outright for about $300. It's a really nice device. I've actually used it. We used it at CES when it first came out, and I was really, really excited about it. Still, I'm really excited about it. But this combination right here, you can have all your files on your Pogo plug, and you can pull them from the cloud, your cloud, your protected cloud. It's the end of TV as we know it, and I feel fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Rose, Dig founder. Of course, he just launched the new Dig version, a beta version. It looks pretty cool. But Kevin Rose announced that, that he said, Hey, I got a secret. I got a secret. Ha <laughs> ha, I got a secret. 
Apple is coming out with what's called ITV. They're going to have a press release in the next couple of weeks to talk about this. Their next version of the Apple TV is going to be called ITV, which is kind of obvious that's what they want to do. They're going to have shows for 99 cents. They're going to have a lot of cool stuff. I'm assuming they'll also have the standard API like you see in a Boxy or a Roku or in a TiVo where you can choose your applications. You can choose things like Revision 3 or Twit.tv or TechPodcast.tv where this show is on. Yes, yes, we've got that on that show. We've got a whole bunch more. And you'll be able to pick and choose, which will bring the question, is this the end of conventional TV? Is this the end? Will you not go through your Comcast? Will you not go through your Time Warner or your Charter or whatever you use for cable TV? Will you get a box and you can choose your content to, to watch? The biggest problem with these boxes, like Google, like uh, Boxy, like Roku, like TiVo, is the fact you've got to choose content to get to. Whereas TV, you turn it on, they're going to program the content for you, you sit down on the couch, you become a couch potato. That's how that works. But on the same aspect, you'll get to pick and choose which shows you want. You want Comedy Central? Hey, get the Comedy Central application. It might cost you, but you get the Comedy Central application. If you want the CNN application, if you want the MTV application, if you want the techpodcast.tv application, hint, hint, hint. If you want anything else, you just pick and choose, and there it is, and it's going to be beautiful. With these two in competition coming out, it's really marking the end of conventional TV, the end of regular channel surfing as we know it, and we're getting into a new age where you won't get your cable through cable, you'll get your cable through the internet. Pretty interesting stuff. It also coincides with the next version of, of high definition te television, which includes ethernet cables as opposed to coaxial cables. So we're seeing this happening right now. And within the next four or five years, you will be getting all your television through the internet, not through a regular coaxial cable. I think that's a great idea, but you'll need a box for every single TV. And that's the five tech things that you should know about. My name is Jeffrey Powers, www.geekazine.com. You can also check me out on tvazine.com, wickazine.com, and the Dan Tech History. We've got a lot of great podcasts over there. 608-205-4378 is the phone number. Geekazine at gmail.com is the email address. We're still working on the Geek Bar and the Geek Studio. All the screen is just amazing. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. So we will see you next time. And next week, I will be in San Francisco. So I will be recording the five tech things next week from the Bay. Might be a little bit late, but watch out for it. And we will see you next week on the five tech things you should know about. <laughs>